evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are, this is Gifty from Baller Mom and um, i like to welcome everybody that's going to be watching or listening um, with today's feature guest, which we will be talking to a coach, a coach that does training for athletes from early on to mid-level to even pro. And uh, I get a lot of parents are always asking me, you know, I'm looking for somebody to give a little bit more dedicated training or coaching to my my um, my student athletes or my son or my daughter. How can I go about it? So today I have an actual coach who does that, who supports, who trains, who um, have that one on one sessions and even small little group sessions with anybody looking to get more skills um, in the basketball world. So today I'm going to invite um, Coach Troy. He will be joining us from High Impact Hoops. He will share his story, who he is, what he's doing, um, how he started, and um, how you can connect with him. So Coach Troy, um, if you can go back on Instagram, um, you join me and I will be able to send you the invite and we can continue the conversation. So if for everybody that's joining in, my name is Gifty. Um, I appreciate you guys and your time all the time. That's always coming back here watching everything that I'm doing. Hopefully it is helping. It, it, it's you know, going a long way and I'm here to definitely help support and cheer each other on. And um, without any further ado, here is Coach Troy and hopefully you can hear me, right? I can hear you. I can hear you. Can you yes. Hear me? Okay. <laughs> so good evening. How are you? I'm blessed. Sis. How are you doing? Good, 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 good. Um, I was just doing a little bit intro um, as to what we're going to be discussing, which is, you know, the coaching aspect that you do. And I, like I said, I do get a lot of questions from parents, you know, that want that dedicated training. And I'm so glad that there is somebody in that side that provides it. You don't necessarily have a team or anything, but you definitely make sure that the fundamentals of being an athlete and understanding the game and the ball um, helps them. So when they go play with your team, they execute exactly as you have taught them. So without sure, me talking <laughs> further, I'd like you to introduce yourself. Who is Coach Troy Denny? What's happening, everybody? My name is Coach Troy Denny. I'm the co-founder along with my wife of High Impact Hoops. I'm the lead trainer. Um, I'm also the person who's kind of, you know, behind some of our mantras and the energy behind High Impact Hoops. Uh, mm -hmm. You like me to keep going, or? <laughs> oh yeah, go ahead. This is your platform. Go ahead. Okay, cool. So yeah, um, been in love with basketball my whole life. I uh, started playing when I was about four. I was able to play, you know, all throughout the Ontario system. I played rep AU, played high school ball at Loyola. I was able to play in the OCAA for a few years at Durham and Fleming. Um, you know, we all have dreams of going yeah, as far as we ahead. can. We yeah, are getting me. a little um, delayed every now and then from, oh, okay. from your side of it, but that's okay. Um, this is not new to me, so we just refresh. And sometimes, you know what, there's so many fees and data yeah. and internet start to act up, but we go with the flow, so don't worry. Nothing new. Okay, cool. So, yeah, you know, I played rap, AU, high school, college, all that, and um, I was blessed to, like, when I was done, to still have an enthusiasm for the game, still have a passion, and um, I spent a lot of time it, uh, you know other entities that did a lot of coaching and training right so I did a lot of work mm -hmm. with elite camps I did stuff with my brother uh, who facilitates ballers union training and I'll tell you those experiences I kind of realized that you know I had a love for obviously the game but teaching it training younger athletes helping them discover their inner potential because I feel like that's something that was missed when I was coming mm -hmm. up you know we got a lot of tough love in the 80s and 90s and tough love's cool sometimes but you need to be a little more sensitive I feel like the times have changed for sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You can't be breaking clipboards like Bobby Knight, right? You gotta have a little more, <laughs> <laughs> a little yeah. more understanding of the individual. So I'm just stuck with it, and I'm, I'm blessed that I'm able to help athletes of you know different ages and different parts of the world. It's really cool like to that. see. Yeah. I like that. I like that. That's good. Um, so it's great because you mentioned that you know you are an athlete yourself, so you must for understand sure. the day in, day out, <laughs> grinding, yeah. and um, ex you know, way of trying to understand who you are as an athlete, as to where you fit in into sure. the realm of being in the sports world. So, if a parent approaches you and they're saying, "I need help um, with my child," does it matter what position they play? 
Um, that doesn't matter as much. It matters more like if the player has incentive for training. Like, why do they want to have training? Because mm-hmm. if they if they don't have a motive or a why, it's all external. It doesn't matter what mom or dad say. It doesn't matter what coach. It doesn't matter what I say. If they don't want to push themselves, if there's not a reason for them to get going, then it's arbitrary, yes. right? This is another thing to tack on. So that's something that I find is interesting. A lot of times parents say, well, I don't know what they want to work on. And I say, well, then I'm not really comfortable with us proceeding. If, if he or she hasn't told you what they want to work on, then why are we even talking, right? Like, I like should, that. So yeah, start no. from the athlete themselves. Yeah. Let them understand yeah. what they want to work on. And then you take on from there to work with them. For sure, for sure. Like, so I can come and point. say, I want my son to know how to do a better shooting and you need to take it on. You literally have to also check with them to make sure that this is what they want. Exactly. And then if I have a relationship with the coach, I'll try to communicate with the coach at some point. You know, yeah. here's some things I'm working on the player with. What are you noticing? What do they have to work on? What would you like them to improve? Or what do they like in practice? If I don't have a relationship with them, then I'll still try to reach out, have some kind of communication. It's, it's better if there's not a gap, right? Yeah. And I, you know what? That's something I never thought of because you will assume that, hey, we're just going to go here and train and then come here and the coach does something different. By connecting with the coach, you're on the same page. For sure, for sure. Make sure that each unique athlete is being, you know, I guess, grown and supported in that same aspect. So the language is the same regardless they're with you or with your team, correct? Um. Some of the language is different because obviously, you know, some of the terms that I'll use and some of the things I'll reference might be a little different, but um, try to have an idea, you know? So like, let's say someone's playing the four, like, where is she getting the ball? Are they catching it at the high post? Do they set a lot of ball screens? Is it a motion? Do they run a four out one in? Like, are they going to mm-hmm. have to relocate on the block? Like, where are they catching it? What do they struggle with? Are you looking for them to score? Should they just be a defensive presence? Do they oh, need wow. decisions up, you know, like, because I could fool people. I could, okay, we're going to do 16 crossovers. And like, you'll get better, but is it applicable? You know what I mean? Like, okay, okay, okay. I, wow. So that's actually good uh, list of questionnaires to sort of think of. So it's not a matter of just sign up and um, just take it away. So I, I value yeah. that because you're not just saying, just come, I need to fill a spot, take it in. You're actually building yeah. that relationship with each athlete. And the parents, I take it, right? Doing my best, right? Doing my best, I mean... <laughs> You know, I heard once heard, when you're working with children, it's like you're performing live brain surgery. And you Ooh, might not, like you, might not hear, you might not hear when it goes well. You might just hear if it goes bad. Yeah. Right? So I don't want somebody to go and say, yo, Coach Troy taught me and they got a broke jump shot. Like, no, we're going gonna to know exactly <laughs> <They gotta laughs> what you're doing. Well beyond, yeah. right? You might right? be like, oh, okay, that's where he got it from. All right, give me his Facts. number, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay, exactly. I like that. I like that. You don't want to make, you know. <laughs> take them no. off to the off their shots and take up off your game but enhance for it. sure for sure i like it yeah there's a shout out for you as well too so oh, that's my boy you rush what's up nice Yuvrash? nice i like that i like when um you know guests Love have their family. own people come in there just to support them as well too and it also shows how you know respected and loved you are within the the world um the whole sports world basketball world in, in toronto that. so you know what keep it up honestly like i was <laughs> saying before you put the best music ever on, on your phone. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard, like, yeah. I need a volume up so I can just dance. I'm not even watching it. I'm just gonna dance. No. It's like, how do you come up with all these music? Of oh, course, man. for those watching, if you do, it's often old school hip hop. So that yeah. is, you know, the real music. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> the crazy thing is, I will usually ask our players like, "What do y'all want to listen to?" Like, let me know. I'll put it on. And like, man, coach, whatever you're always playing. I'm like, all right. Back to 1993. Nice. Let's do it. That's it. Good era. <laughs> oh, for sure. No that was good. We had a throwback during the Super Bowl anyways to those eras. Right? So that was exactly. good. <laughs> exactly. I like that. And I like how you combine both music and sports and check with your athletes. So it's more of a, it's a unity thing. It's not just come drill hardcore and go away, right. but it's a continuous um, relationship. Correct? For sure. For sure. Sorry, um, so I'm just going to reposition myself. Give me one sec. Yeah, sure, for sure. And if anybody has any all specific right, so question um, for Coach Troy, please, by all means, you know, um, put it in a, in, a, in a comment section. I have to read what it says right. there again. Comment right. section, and um, we will be sure to make sure that it gets answered. And I will also provide all of his information for you to be able to connect with him, cool. uh, whether through email, Instagram, 
um, phone, whatever it is that he's readily available and him and his um, partner, his wife, your team can definitely support you and help you out. Now, no doubt. going back to the relationship with the athlete and the parents, I know you're a dad yourself too. So I guess when a parent is coming to you, you understand from a parent's perspective, right? Um, yeah. A lot of us often, you know, everybody thinks their kids are number one, honestly, <laughs> like, <laughs> why not? Right. I mean, right. it's, it's given, of course. Um, <laughs> but how do you hone around that topic and, you know, let that parents know that maybe what their high expectation is may not be where that particular athlete is. And maybe you can work towards it, but let For them sure. know, you know realistically so that you can have a work plan to go towards where they're trying to get to. And so I think it's important, you know, go back to what the player sees, right? Like, I think we can't like underscore enough the, the importance for like mental wellness, especially with the youth, especially over these last two years, which feel like mm -hmm. 20 years, right? I think it's important to get an idea where they're at and um, being your best is different than being the best. You know, like- Being um, your best. I like that. Being yeah. your best is better than being the best. For sure, you know, so every season there's one champion there's one mvp you know what about everybody else right like so if there's one player that's the best the other players does that mean they're not giving their best effort i don't think so but i think it really relies on you knowing where your best is right so i, I would mm -hmm. like every player to have the mindset like yeah i want to i want to dominate for sure but in what aspect right we see the highlights and the scoring and that's a beautiful part of the game we yes. all aspire to that part that part attracts us right but yes yes you know for, for like for Steph Curry's um, record-breaking three-pointer, everybody saw the three, but what I saw was like Andrew Wiggins cutting it, making a one-hand pass. Thank I you. Saw Kevin yes, Looney doing a dive screen, right? I see like I see slip screens. I see Draymond Draymond waiting. I saw Curry like backpedaling as fast as he could, dropping his hips. Like so mm -hmm. all those pieces are a part of it, right? Some people yep. just see the end, and if all those guys didn't have those small intangible skills he wouldn't have those shots right so exactly i always explain the game as um like a bicycle you know it's a right. wheel and you have all these little things that point to it to make it pedal and go if Absolutely. one little string comes off ever try to fix it with the little missing string <laughs> yeah it's not working right it's not working yeah it's not the same it's, it's not, not the, the same. same so i like how you explain that yeah like you know highlights are great but it's good as from a coach perspective and i guess even from parents perspective look the other, you know, supporting yeah. cast that are For there. Sure. So For is that sure. one of the key points that you sort of take into when you're working with your athlete, that it's not just about being the number one, but also being part of the team and then being more comfortable in the role that you're playing? Yeah, and like, how do you contribute to the team? Like, what do you contribute in the locker room? What do you contribute during shoot rounds? If you guys have a group chat in the warm up, you know, okay. at halftime, in between quarters, during a timeout, during free throws, like, what are you contributing, right? Like, you just shoot step backs that's cool but like we all shoot step backs now you know what i mean like mm -hmm. people are pretty prone offensive players these skills are these kids are substantially more skilled than we were 15 20 years ago that doesn't mean they're overall better basketball players but like their skill acumen their ball handling their shot creation you know mm -hmm. their ability to dribble two like all those things are really high but like what are you contributing and usually a coach won't have 10 scores you know what i mean like yeah Someone's got to board up. Someone's got to play D. Someone has to find people. Someone's got to take charges. Someone's got to be, you know, the, the enforcer. Yep. Like, yep. so I what's like, your role in the team, right? And then once role? you know your role, exactly, know your role. You know, I would say, like, um, Draymond Green is a great example of that. He knows his role and because he does so many things so well. Whether he scores or not, it's not a make or break. If he scores, it's a bonus. If he doesn't score, he still has an imprint on the game. Mm -hmm. You know, like... Tamika Catchings was like that as well. She's one of the greatest players of all time. And she wasn't consistently dropping 20 or 30, but she'd have like nine points, eight rebounds, seven steals, two blocks of charge, talking to all her teammates, stopping for loose balls. It's like mm -hmm. she got the whole package, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I'm just, I like that. It's not all about just the main point or the main person with the lights on, which I always tell our boys, like, when we're watching a game, I'm not concerned about the one that the camera's following. I'm watching them with the people behind the scenes and the camera's exactly. not following, but they assisted that person for the camera to right. follow them, right? So for it's sure, a team sure. effort. And I appreciate that you're not just getting, you know, accepting parents or athletes to come to you to become the shine of it. You understand? You're helping them yeah. understand the role that they, they play 
and how to, I guess, be better at it and be comfortable. For sure. Right? And there's definitely, for sure. Yeah, no, There's go definitely ahead. some players who come to us and, like, they want that shot and they deserve it and they're capable of it. But it's the work, right? Like, mm-hmm. we do 6 a.m. sessions. We train all throughout the year. We do dry, like, we do a lot of stuff. And then you see some people fall off. Like, they can't handle it, right? Like, especially in the social media age, there's been a lot of people that, that have been stars, like, at a young yeah. age, but it's hard for them to sustain it. You know what I mean? And yeah. this is not, like a knock I, w- I want everyone to do well and everyone to sustain their level of performance it's just it's tough to dedicate yourself every day like we admire Kobe but 90% of athletes couldn't even keep up with his regimen like yeah right like yeah we can we admire it not everybody embodies it you know what I'm saying yeah, exactly so it's players, different to say versus sure. actually doing and you use just saying 6 a.m 6 a. sessions i'm just thinking okay what does it mean i have to wake up what time when they have to get ready like right. you have to be you know you gotta be hungry for it i guess right hungry. yeah and, and that see. takes me to where you, you guys have your phrase which is you know preserve to or prepare to preserve should i say persevere. right prepare to yes. persevere yeah yeah that's <laughs> right so explain that to us i gotta give all the credit to my wife so she came up with the the name, the logo, prepared to first yeah. So it wasn't for nice. her. Shout I just out. dribbling. Shout out to my <laughs> wife. But um, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but when she brought it up, she was like, she wanted to see that the the kids that had these dreams, they're willing to put in the work mm-hmm. and like not not let the stress of life or like the politics of the game derail their joy, right? Like if you love it so much, you're gonna persevere, you know, and it's not gonna be an even streak, like the game takes more from us than it gives. Because when we're done playing the game, it still has lots of suitors, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, most of most of sports is losing and failing. You know, like LeBron's one of the all-time greatest players. So Sue Bird, they have nine championships in a combined 38 seasons. Yeah. Like, we took a look at that ratio. They lost I'm, more than they've won. They're way yeah. more, and they're the greatest, right? So I think having athletes understand that the the academic balance is tough too, right? Like you may have assignments due, you may have tests or exams, but you still gotta put your shots up. Mm-hmm. You may go to the weight room, you still gotta put shots up, you know? You went to practice, but so do the rest of your teammates. How are you gonna persevere, right? You can't just do the bare minimum. And I think that's yeah. why you know, a lot of the kids you see us posting frequently, they definitely persevere. You know, sometimes we don't post their defeats, but like when I see them you know, maintain their confidence or regain their confidence in those pursuits, I definitely yeah. want to shout them out, you know? So yeah, you know, like, shout you see out all to the Chloe, time. honestly. Yeah. Chloe no Coleman, doubt. like she's one of your uh, star yeah, uh, training athletes there. And I see that her expanding really well. So honestly, like from from a fan perspective and as a parent perspective, anybody else that's watching or listening, honestly, um, Coach Troy is whatever he is teaching the student, the athletes, it does show at the end in your growth and in your game. So it's not, you know, just fancy numbers on a chart, go do it while I read and scroll on in- Instagram. You're no, actually no, no. like one-on-one, hands-on yeah, yeah, with them. Sure. And I think that's what a lot of parents want, right? That one-on-one understanding saying, okay, if I'm leaving them, if I'm leaving her or him too with this particular trainer, I know they're in good hands. I know that I'm going to get the results. And, but you, as you said earlier, does the athlete want that, right? And do that's the key it, point. Right? Yes. So there's a question sure. for you. Where do you train? Which was one of my questions. So go ahead, oh, uh, Mr. Oliver. My... would like to know where do you train? <laughs> we train all throughout the GTA. So we have access to courts as far west as Milton. Shout out to Elevate. We rock in Brampton, the Empire. Um, we're in North York slash Toronto Ballers Union. We also have a discreet Mississauga location. Can't reveal the information. That's the Bat Cave, but um. That's yeah, and we're pretty flexible. If you have the dungeons, courts guess, that are near right? you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When um you know in our in our six week summer we have here, we do outdoor sessions. <laughs> yeah. Different do locations. You have any in but, Vaughan uh, at all? That's the uh, the next question. Um, do we have any in Vaughn? We can make our way to Vaughn. I mean Baller's Union is pretty close to Vaughn, right? It's uh it's pretty much four hundred and French, so it's, it's a hop jump and a skip and away, but you know, this course in Vaughn, there's game six that we can facilitate. So we're flexible, right? Our motto is for the youth. So if it's, you know, for a player that really wants to get better and they're willing to put mm-hmm. in the work and their commitment has conviction, I'll make it there. Uh, you know, at the same time, as you mentioned, I'm a baller dad and my husband. 
Um, this is my first priority. So if I'm venturing out to train anybody, it has to be worth it. Not in terms of money because that comes and goes, right? Yep. It's about the time and, you know, what are they getting out of it and how much do they value their energy and what are they putting into it? And when I see them next week, are they, you know, are they still jumping off the wrong leg or like have they made that stride? So I'm willing to go anywhere um, within reason, but all our main facilities are Milton, North York, Brampton, and Saga. Saga City is where I'm from, so I got to represent <laughs> I like that. Okay. And uh, Oliver, I will send you um, the locations that he listed again, just so in case you want to um, check with, you know, where you are. And then I, I, I get his question too, because we also have to map ourselves, right? As to sure. how far we need to drive. Okay, am For I going to sure. drop or am I going to stay when, when I take? Exactly. And how long is it? One hour, two hours? Okay. Take now that everything is open, traffic again, right? School's down by Crazy. 3, 3.30, yeah. you're home at 4. Okay, 5 o'clock, traffic, we're training. Like, yeah. all these things that go through our head. <laughs> it is crazy. It's, some, it's madness. It's yeah. Madness. Uh, I, and the next question is, so what's the minimum in uh, group training? Like, what's your capacity when you're doing group training? So for minimum, well, minimum for group training would be 5 or 6. That would be considered a group. Uh, we do semi-private as well. There's 2 to 4 players. That's okay. more... Um, obviously more like intimate ratio. So it allows us to really ask, you know, these players, what do you want to work on specifically? Then we combine a curriculum uh, for them. Our group sessions still have very like important skill sets that we touch on, but um, minimum number of kids. Yeah. For group training, about five or six for semi-private uh, two. And um, okay. we, we focus on skills that lend to positionless basketball now. Okay. So regard, regard and do you do it based them. on the same level that each athletes are, or do you mix it together from beginners, mid tier, top tier to sort of do the training together? Um, it so like in our group sessions there will be a gap, but like it won't be like beginner and expert, you know, because then it okay. won't be feasible to have a program that kind of caters to both. But um, the, the players are at different levels, you know, like even within the same age, right? So yeah, we definitely cater to like what we think like all kids need to be able to move without the ball you mm -hmm. have excellent footwork pass off the dribble shoot off the catch and off the dribble and they need to be able to create and play in live scenarios we also when we do our scrimmage portions of our group sessions we really talk about like loading and help side and rotation and seeing the court so because you can just teach them skills but if they can't incorporate it then you're just training robots right you want them to be able to make yes can you just repeat that again? Because there's a difference between skills exactly. and drills For and sure. understanding how the games are. And I know you're one of the very uh, few coaches that I know really take it to that level. Like, don't just get Appreciate the ball that. and just pick it up and throw. There's a right. method to it. And I didn't realize that until I was like, oh, wow. I would get, obviously, I'm not a, a player. And I tried dunking and the ball hit me. And, and oh, they're there. looking at me. They're like, that's not I was like oh it's not as easy as it looks trust me <laughs> yeah, it's a little well I guess um the best way I could look at it like someone could stand there and dribble between their legs 20 times and they could have good skill and that'll be dribbling but mm -hmm. ball handling is can you use that move when it's necessary to create an advantage for you and your teammates and I guess that's the biggest way to like decipher what we do right like mm -hmm. like so how are you going to use these skills right where are you going to get the ball? If you're the point guard, then you have to have a different understanding of tempo and pace. But if you're playing off the ball, like, how are you getting the ball? A lot of players, like, they can't tell you how they get the ball. They can't tell you, like, I got to wait for this pin down to come up or after she cuts through, I'm going to set a screen and I flare. Like, they'll say over there, or over there. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. I don't want to get into it, but that's wow. where we can kind of help, right? And just, you have to know what you're doing and People have to understand that a lot of coaches are volunteering their time. They have families, they have jobs, and, you know, they're training these kids. Maybe one or two of them is their son or daughter, maybe none. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, there's also the team needs, right? Like in a two-hour practice, you don't have time to work on everyone's individual skills. You need to come ready. That's why you have trials. That's why you have off -season. That's why there's trainers, right? So yes. it's not the coach's responsibility to get you ready. You have to go there and be ready. So when you have the time where you're putting in extra work, know what you have to work on. Know explicitly. Know where you're struggling. Know what coach is yelling at you about. Know when you get subbed out. Know when you get cooked. Like, <laughs> you got to know these things, and then you can kind of rectify them the best we can. Oh, man, you are dropping good, good uh, gems there. Like, the key point I got from there is 
it's not the coach's job to get you ready. You have to go yeah. there ready. So obviously, if you're in a team of 15 players, including yourself, you have two hours of training. Yes, coach knows each one's position, but right. get the additional support from another coach to train you. Like you said, you don't Absolutely. just take that athlete and just do it one way in a silo. You always try to reach yeah. out to your team coach, especially if they play on a team, to understand how they're doing it so you can work it together. And I think that's one of the best respectful things that I, I, I've heard because it makes a lot of sense. I don't want to send my son over there. You do one thing and then they go with their team and the coach is doing something different and being sure. challenged to do a movement that doesn't suit their style of play, right? No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, it so, has to make sense. Yes, yes, it does. It has to make sense. So for the players who are watching or going to listen a little bit later, you got to go ready. You have to be right. ready. You have to know what is expected of you because you're one of many. Um, and the coach will help you enhance it. But if you're looking to and you know get that additional support, go to uh, Coach Troy, who's going to help you understand that particular unique skill that you need to work on or you're working on trying to be the best at, right? Absolutely. And if I'm saying it you. wrong, by all means, let me know because no, no, you, you I think it's it. very, very important. Like, you know, there's teams and there's team trainings or there's team dynamic, but right. also is it apparent that you also get that specific one-on-one -on -one focus for yourself to be able to for say, sure. this is this is where I'm at. And for me as a parent, I will see, yes, I can see that move. And I will probably be the one that will do that highlight video and send it to you, right? Yeah, don't, don't. Like I that movie you show them, that's what they're yeah. doing at a game. <laughs> and it's all I'm about the see. scoring because that's never my concern about getting the score. No, right. I, I don't. I could care less how many points you get at the end of the game. No, right. it's just more of how you played and executed the skills that you have at the, sure. all the way from beginning for the two or three minutes that you're on the court. So kudos yeah. to that. Um, Nobody else has any questions yet, but uh, there are a lot of uh, agreement to what you're saying, which is great. So we'll keep going. Um, another question I want to find out from you is, and you talk a bit about the whole mindset aspect of it. From when you were playing, coaching mentality was totally different. Of course, you know, it was more like yell at them, cuss at them, and then they'll, you know, be fearful of the older men and yeah. women and aunties and uncles and never talk back type of mentality right 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 <laughs> that dirty grinding thing <laughs> but times yeah. have changed of course times have changed and we have to be mindful of everybody's emotions and everybody develop and take things differently so right. how do you go about assessing and ensuring that the right terminology and tones are being used with your trainer um your trainees to ensure that they're you know getting out of their shell and excel how they need to be one thing that helped is like uh, my wife she's still a teacher and um i've been a behavior counselor for a long while so we had a lot of experience dealing with you know young people that were in the midst of trauma right sometimes mm -hmm. basketball can be an escape or a mask there could be people going through stuff and they don't want to talk about it because that's why they're playing ball and there could also be stuff that they're going through but they can have such a facade or you know like a mm -hmm. a mean mug when they're playing that you can ignore it but feel like stu students when they're at school they're a little more vulnerable you see them for longer periods you see like a range of emotions and just you know seeing some intense situations kind of like equipped us and that was part of our ethos for why do you want to do this right like there's a lot of dope trainers you know like there's a lot yes. of sick 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 basketball minds and I just felt like we could offer something unique in terms of like we're a couple, so like how we go through it is different. Um, mm -hmm. Us looking at children like as people and like really like caring about their voice is important. And I think like we're both hard workers, but where do you draw the line, right? Like, yes. I'll, I'll push myself to exhaustion, but that's me pushing you, right? Like, if yeah. I need you to push me, at some point it's not going to work. And yeah. I think um, just being mindful, right? I, I spend a lot of time talking with players. I. I'm pretty intense, but I joke with them all the time. Like, if you train with me, I've probably told you to tie your shoelaces 20 times. And if you put your head okay, down... Okay, so I'm not the only right? one. I hate when kids stop and everybody... You know, can you just stop and have everybody just tie the shoelaces exactly, for once or right? go to Walmart and get you a Velcro? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this time, uh, I'm really big on the relationship with the players. You know, I, I talk to a lot of our players, like, you know, text, DM, sometimes they'll call and, like, I'll try and catch your games. I'll make sure we have, like... A personal connection or else I'm just just another person teaching you something right like mm -hmm. 
it's, it's less important what I'm teaching you, and more important what you're learning. With that, that like resonates. Like you know that. what I mean? It's not what's being taught; it's what's being learned. I exactly. like that because it's true. You can't train or speak with each athlete the same manner. Nah. Nah. Especially if you're doing that one-on-one -on -one or small group training. And I, I, you keep emphasizing the fact that you get to know them as a person. And that's good yeah. to know because, you know, I mean, as a parent, I would speak with them differently. But sometimes they hear it better from a different right. person with a different right. perspective. Plus, you probably say in a much more cooler way than we do anyways. <laughs> so and I get to leave, good. right? So. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, you, yeah. Use, you can sound it more nice and they can chill with you more as opposed to us telling them, you know, a certain way. Yeah, like, different. Do it and all um, in a mindful way, which is great. Like Oliver, uh, who's a mindful parenting, they're always giving great yeah. tips on different ways to speak with kids. So I like that you incorporate, you know, their mindset and their emotional um, behavior in it to make sure that sure. you're still getting them to excel and not just stuck in one bubble, um, yeah. come in, dribble ball for 20 minutes and go home. There's more to exactly. it. It's Can't good. be at the expense of them, right? Can't be at the no. expense of their humanity. And I'm, I'm not perfect. There's definitely some times where I've had to reflect and like check myself, you know? So at first, at first you're almost afraid of making those mistakes. If I go back, I'll do things differently, but having the experience has like made me more informed, right? And also, mm -hmm. My son, he's he'll be three in May, and um, yeah. Oh my gosh, don't get me started. Let me start my fun day. Years. Oh Very my gosh, fun yeah. Year. I'm loving it. He runs the house. I just live here. He runs. That's the boss. <laughs> I love it, right? <laughs> but um, you know, I don't trust anybody with my kid. Obviously, like he goes to like you know his certain programs, and you have to. But it's like it hit me differently. You know what I'm saying? And then really humbled that like a lot of these parents trust me with like their son or daughter, right? Like. To that, I'm teaching them basketball, but there's so many other things they're learning in the meantime, right? So mm -hmm. I don't take that. I don't take that for granted. I, I'd be very mindful that I'm planting seeds, and it's probably something that I didn't say to them that they'll remember. You know what I mean? Like they may not remember ten years from now that I said, "Yo, go left, right, step." You know, when you're taking this hezzy jump shot, but they might remember what I said about like an experience that I had, or when they were struggling, what I said to them, or mm -hmm. when they were talking to me, was I looking at them, or. Mm -hmm. How did I talk to somebody else when they didn't think I was, when I didn't know they were looking, you know, those are the kind mm -hmm. of things that are going to resonate mm -hmm. with them more. So let's really try to emphasize that as much as I can. Wow. Well, keep doing it. Cause I think it's, it's great. And to know that somebody coming to you, they're not going to feel like, Oh, this is a drag. I'm going to be so tired. All right. we're going to do is just going to do 20 shots and go away <laughs> or blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And as yeah. Oliver said, you're being, you're more than a coach. You're a mentor too, which is great. And Thank we need that, right? We need that to, to, as be, to be part of the whole unit. It's not just well come in and do the work and go home. You're educating them and you're helping them, making them feel like they belong, which I love. And um, as Oliver also said, some of them might listen to you more than their parents too. Yes, I agree with that. I that yeah. There's always that thing. <laughs> and you know what? And the fact yeah. that your mindset in even guiding them is not to derail, but also to enhance. And it's an open right. communication. Kudos to you for that, Thank honestly. You. So anybody coming to you should not even be you know, of concern yeah. because you're humble on that end, which is I awesome. I appreciate it. We yeah. definitely drill though, like we put that work in. I'm oh, kind yeah. of a I'm a drill sergeant, like in that regard, but with with caution, right? Like I'm yeah. never demeaning, I'm never gonna belittle you, I'm never gonna like treat you well, like but I'm gonna get you going, you know? I'm gonna get you yeah. going. I like that. It's it's good. And we need that. Because again, spare the raw, spare the child, whatever, all these weird codes that goes on. But <laughs> you do <laughs> you definitely do have to make sure they get the message, right? Right. <laughs> and you have to make sure that they're still aware of it so they can come back the next For day sure. and continue to grow. And I like that. Yeah. But when it comes to parents though, because some of us are nosy and some of us could be nagging. <laughs> some of us could feel like we could do a better job, you know, but I don't have my coaching license and I can't oh do this. Goodness. I can't do that. So you go that. ahead and do it. And they might want to come in and try to give you hints on what to do. So how do you maneuver that, you know, and saying, okay, I, I get your point, but this is what we're going to do. And, you know, be consistent on it. There's a way of saying no nicely without saying no, <laughs> you know? So you. how do you go around that? Um, First thing I do is listen, you know, like it's their child. So I definitely respect where they're coming from, you know, and 
once again, being a father now, we're we're constantly defensive. Like, yeah, you know, like you just yeah. can't take it off, right? So um, yeah. I'm aware of that. And also like just being honest, right? Like if what they're saying has validity, that's, that's dope. That's, that's part of the community. It's part of the village. I'll incorporate it. If what mm-hmm. they're saying is whack, I'll let them know. And yeah. um, for the most part, um, when kids are training, the parents have to be invisible. If you're there, you can't say a damn thing. Don't say nothing. Don't talk to them. Don't correct. They can't notice you. If the kid looks at you, they're going to have push-ups. Like, let them focus. Good. Let them have their environment. I like um, that. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're blessed. The HIH family is full of, like, really dope people. And, you know, from what I see and from the experiences that we have together, like, most of the parents are on board. And they don't, you know, they don't try to go too far. For the most part, no one really tries to question what I'm teaching or... Mm-hmm. Give, maybe i was just speaking from advice. a game perspective not and not to, so much yeah. the more than one training well but as all of us to say you know most parents uh ruin the sports for their kids because they are too caught up in it being competitive i it agree happens, you know, competition is good but to a certain extent which is great right to, yeah, so you can't sure. be it can't be all about winning like i said i don't want to know how many shots you made or how many points you got how did you perform did you put in the works based on your skills and did you do it the way you, your coach and your team right. has put it together. And that's, sure. to me, is a success at the end of every game when we I go home, right? Um, and then, yeah, we do need parents to focus on the process and improvement, et cetera, which I believe that's what you're, you were saying earlier, like you listen, which is a good start as a process, yeah. analyze what you're saying, and then, you know, make it that open, constructive um, communication back. Now, say I want to sign up my kids with you. Like, what are the packages that you have or agreement that you have like do you have a an assessment first and then you know you before you complete it or do you say okay come in this is the time and day and location that works and let's get going like how does it work um you know we've had to modify our processes so much during these last two in like 20 years right so we had um, to pivot right right for sure we had to and <laughs> yeah. um we're also like um we're kind of like cognizant of like everybody's finances are different, right? So mm-hmm. we've actually removed our assessment process. We, just, we had an assessment that took place prior to the session, but the main thing now is when parents reach out, it's extensive communication. So email, text, DM, whatever it is. I want to know what you need, what you're looking for, what mm-hmm. your son or daughter or daughters or sons need. And then from there, we'll make a program that's tailored for, for your child, right? So if you're if your child has a busy schedule and they want to get some group sessions in to get some extra reps and compete a little bit, cool, we got you. You know, your son has to improve his three-point shooting. He's weak going to his left and he doesn't take any mid-range Then probably better for one-on-one, right? So we do mm-hmm. one-on-one in packages of uh, we do one session or we do three sessions, right? So you kind of take it easy or you commit to a little bit. Usually when you, people do three, they want to continue if they can. Mm-hmm. Um, and then our group sessions are semi-private, so kind of like just as you go. Because um, right now, every, you know, with us not everybody's playing different. and playing, yep. exactly. And right now it's like everybody's playing again, which is amazing, right? So it's, yes. it's hard for people to commit to a certain schedule. So I'm pretty yeah. flexible in that regard. I like that. I hope I answered yeah. the question. Oh, okay. no, no, hey, you did. You did more than yeah. enough, which is good. Because right. yes, for us here, we, we, we're able to have competition now. We're playing and traveling and all of that, which is great. But when that was not happening, of course, all you can do is just train. Exactly. You know, facility permitted and all of the rules and all that <laughs> stuff that we had to follow through was yeah. great, right? No, no. So it's good that you had that, you have that uh, flexibility based on the option that fits the family, fits the, the, the student, the athlete, um, yeah. and fits the timing, uh, whether it be, you know, location or even finance aspect. Of it. Because a lot of people don't often consider the finance. I know it's a business. Um, and at the same time, we get it. Nothing is free. But it's great when you get it from a coach perspective and say, okay, I understand. Let's work out the way because I believe in your child and let's work it out and you're open about it and not, well, pay me now or we do nothing type of thing, which if that becomes a mindset, you know, definitely a no-no. So, you know, word word to anybody else. I will never refer you to anyone who has just that dollar mindset because at the end of the day, we're not here to sell each other. We're here to grow um, each other for sure. Now, sure. Being in sports and business aspect of it, there are, you know, some of these athletes that you're training could one day turn out to become their own 
um, trainers, their own businesses, and who knows what 10 years from now, where the sports in terms of sports and business might lead to, you know, right. whoever thought that you could finish playing pro uh, college or university and then start your own business in that aspect of it, yeah, right? I you never just thought thought, so. I'm done, I'm going to work in the office and just make my money and move on, right? <laughs> and then talk about the good old days, but you're still <laughs> with it, <laughs> right? So for the athletes, uh, because I know some of them, you know, may not even see themselves that they could actually be in that position and be in a, still be in sports, but be in that position of also starting their own or supporting others. So how do you combine that aspect of like, how do you combine being an, a coach yourself and the business side of it and still making sure that there's like, you know, a clear path to, so that you're not lost either way. Wow. Great Sorry. Question. Yeah, I know. I asked a lot of questions. No, no, that's tough. <laughs> Um, Sorry. <laughs> so I think it's the pillars, right? Like, um, yeah, we are for the youth. So I never, I never want finances to be a reason why a player can't get in the gym. Mm -hmm. Um, with that being said, though, every single time I step on the court, I'm making, I'm taking time. I don't want to say take time away, but I'm not with my family during those times, right? Yeah. So, those are my priorities, right? Like, I want my family's first, and with my efforts in basketball, I want to be able to help kids so mm -hmm. I, tr I try to keep that there and the balance is strays because there's no return on energy you know what i'm saying so yeah i could extend expert disperse a lot of energy and i might not get it back i might not see that player they might like you know just things happen it's life right and um with that being said like that's where the business side of it comes in like we have cancellation policies and you have to register and yes you know well we have confirmations and Commit we, to what you're trying to commit sure. to, right? Yes, and good. We really, we are a training entity, but I consider us more of a community and if we're being literal, like a family, right? So I want, I don't, I prefer, the training is not random. Like if I'm going to see you once and I see you again, I'd rather we're not train you because what am I going to do? Like, what can I really do in an hour with you, right? Like, mm -hmm. the substantial, mm -hmm. you know? So that's the basis too you gotta kind of you're, you're either in the family or you're not like anyone come in it but once you're in it like you're in it for life you're gonna look out for you right so there's players yeah. who you know I, I met when they're in grade six and then maybe i saw them long grade seven but i didn't see them in grade eight and i'll see them in a grade nine right like you can go and come back so the rapport is really there right and i think that stems from when people reach out to us like i spend time to talk to them you know so yeah people that i'm training i, I want to train and from what i understand they want to train with me so then I'll allocate the time to them. Also on the hours, right? I do the 6 a.m. so that like there are times where I can come home at night and have, you know, a good portion of the day with my family and then do like an evening shift, right? So yeah, it doesn't always work out. Like today's a day where I saw my son. I, I took him to preschool that I haven't seen him since. He's asleep now. So oh my those gosh. Those yeah. days suck. Those, I those won't keep you long though so you can still go give him that good night kiss. Oh, he already and asleep. He already asleep. He already asleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh I, but you know what i totally i totally get it and i like that you are um understanding from a family perspective yes it's a business but you're also a human you know and parents coming yeah. to you is not like i'm just going to give you and he's taking 500 dollars away from me and what happened i hear these type of talks all the time but like you said if the child or the athlete understands where their need is and they clarify it to you then you work on that with them. Right, so it's not what sure. I want my child to improve on. You also check with them where they see themselves they need to be improved on. So exactly. for the athletes that are watching, you know, understand your level of play. Like understand your skills. And if you're not sure, be honest about it. Say, I'm not sure. Can you just look and you know, see right. where you feel and then work it for out? Sure. With it, right? And yeah, you know, I encourage athletes to like also like check with their coach. Like, why aren't you playing? What do you have to do more? You know? If you're not finishing the game, why aren't you finishing the game? If you're not a starter, why aren't you a starter, right? Like, yes. if, you want, if you want to play the one, but they have you at the two, like, what do you have to do? So mm -hmm. people, sometimes, sometimes people are afraid to have those conversations, but I feel like if you ask, even if you don't like the answer you get, you have some kind of clarity. Maybe Thank it's motivation you. to push them. Maybe it's, like, helpful. Maybe something they're going to look out for. Maybe you can understand what they were saying, right? But yep. you, you made it on the it. team for a reason. So exactly. have that open communication. Just like we, I always say, even with, you know, in school, you check in with the teachers. So why not check in with the coach? Right? Absolutely. And, yeah. Yeah. Coaches yeah. have a lot, have a lot they're juggling, you know, and none of us are perfect. We're, 
we're as good as our virtues and as bad as our insecurities, you know, and that's yes. kind of like the scale for all of us. So being yeah. mindful of that, I feel like it helps. <laughs> yeah. Good way of uh, saving the coaches. Cause honestly, it's good to hear somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, speak and stand up for them. I mean, I'm always on the parent side, you know, we're always thinking differently, <laughs> but it's always nice to hear from a coach, support another yeah. coach and trainer, support another trainer from their you know, perspective that well at the end of the day, they're human beings too. Right. They're and sometimes, just like we watch actual games and there are calls that should have been made, but the refs don't see it because they're saying different, you know, their views are different as to exactly. how they see it. So be open about it. Don't be scared to ask for feedback. Don't be scared to ask how I can do better if you want to do it better. And based yeah. on those feedback, when you join Coach Troy, you bring it back to him and you guys have that conversation. You oh, have no. a game plan and you work on. Now, one thing I want to find out too, though, do you have like a, uh, a, a game plan or a mapping or some sort of a goal setting that you do with each trainer to say, okay, we're going to start here and we have a three weeks timeline and we're going to work on it. Or do you sort of say, okay, it's a three week session. So we're going to do the same thing over and over. Like do you fluctuate or do you have something where they can take home or take to their team and practice with it? It's kind of like, if like I a homework. Alec- yeah. Like, <laughs> If it's like an allegory, I'd say, like, let's say I'm trying to get from like Brampton to like the Air Camp. What's it called? Air Camp? Is that whatever it's called now? Like, Scotia. <laughs> Scotia Bank Arena. There's a lot of ways to get there, right? So mm-hmm. I, I want to get there, but like, how are we going to get there? So, like, if a player is like kind of stiff and their hip mobility isn't the greatest, well, like, we're going to make sure our warm up kind of helps you open up. We're going to make sure you do a lot of sequences where it might not seem like it's the same, but we're reintegrating the similar movements right and then once i see that getting better then we can expand even more so i definitely kind of have an idea of what they have to work on just um based on studying the game you know knowing certain tendencies and mm-hmm. um just really seeing like if you just look at a player for five minutes you can like learn so much about them you know like when they miss a shot how do they respond how do they walk back when you're looking at them what do they do what's their mm-hmm. energy like are they going as hard in their moves or are they try not to mess up right like you pay attention to those kind of things and then it's easier to see like where they have to get to. But um, we do a lot of stuff that is similar, but from session to session or rep to rep, it, it's varied. So you might feel like it's different, which is good because, you know, it deviates from boredom, but it helps you get to those levels, right? Yeah. So you're improving without even realizing that you're improving. I, yeah, I like, sure. yeah, I, I, I like that because... Sometimes we can say the same thing over and over and it just doesn't even bounce into the ear, <laughs> but exactly. you have a way of getting them to do it because you know what the ultimate goal is, but you have different ways you said to get there. And, and if it's not working, yeah, I'm, I explore the family like going elsewhere, right? Like, Oh, okay. If so it's you, not receptive, right? Like if, yeah. I don't want to say the same thing for five weeks, right? I'm sure mm-hmm. he or she doesn't want to hear me say for five weeks and I could just take your money, but like, there's no purpose, right? Like, yeah. What's the reason for that happening? So, I like. Oh, okay. That's that's good because it's not just for you to consistently say I want to be in business. I'm training you, but at the end of the, if it's not working, you there's that honesty and you know what? That's respect. That's that's like that's that is true respect because it's not like okay. I'm gonna keep you coming in even though we're not getting anywhere. But you're open enough to say, yeah. hey, you've reached a point. Move on to the next one and maybe recommend you to somebody else or something else. Wow. This is like for the youth. <laughs> I like that. I like that. And hi to everybody else yeah. that's joining. So I have Coach Troy here for High Impact Hoops. Um, he is the co-founder, he's a trainer, he's also a mentor. Um, <laughs> he's a musical genius. Oh, <laughs> and um He knows his game and he understands the game of basketball, not just from the highlights that we see, but understanding each player. You're understanding who you are, your stands, your movements, and he works with you. So he offers um, private semi-group training and one-on-one training between Brampton, North York, Mississauga, and... um, Milton. So I will share all this information a little bit later on for you guys to connect with him. But for any of those parents that keep asking, I want more training, I want more training, he is definitely one of them to go to. (laughs) Um, If you're not comfortable, just come through me. I'll, you know, do the little medium (laughs) referral and you can uh, 
take on that conversation for sure to, you know, test it out and see if it's, you know, the, the right fit for you. And if it's not, like he said, he's, he's honest enough to let you know if it's working or not. It's not a matter of coming, <laughs> pay me a thousand and I'm never going to, you know, get you better because no, like no, you said, you know, you're, it's good. And, and that honesty is well respected. I don't think any parents that's watching this would be like, Oh, really? Like what's wrong with you with that? No, it's more like, Thank you for the honesty and let <laughs> us know that it is working or this is not working and it's continuing, right. whatever stage they're at, which is great. Um, the age group that you train, where do you start and where do you end? For one-on-one, -on -one, we start at 10. Um, group okay. sessions, 12 and up. Um, you know, we're for the youth, but like if you're 18, 19, like we're not going to shut you out, you know, like <laughs> it's not like that. Older kids need love like, too, right? Yeah. They need love too. And as we watch you grow, we like to continue to grow with you, right? So we also have, you know, some adults that are new to the game that are training with us now too. So really expanded our clientele and Wait, you train parents too? No parents as of yet. Because <laughs> I know, would just raise adults. my hand up and be like, hey. um. Can I? We can get it in. We can get it in. But. You need a lot of patience with me, though. <laughs> it's okay. We'll have a six-month plan. We'll be right. <laughs> oh, man. You can't call everything. will be a travel. That's for yeah. sure. <laughs> Everybody starts somewhere, right? Everybody starts somewhere. True. <laughs> we need a 20-year plan just for me to be able to move from one side to the other. Seriously. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, man. Seriously. But it's good. I'm glad you, you know, you're expanding. It's not just small little group but you have the dynamic flexibility to support anyone that's right. in that need and like you said it's from 10 so if anybody's coming to you do they have to actually be on the team or can they just come for the no, fundamentals early starting to get the feel of the game before they actually even make it on the team they have to be committed it doesn't matter where they start but like if, if they're not strong and i let them know like listen you got a lot of work and to put in excessive amounts of work we can get mm -hmm. places like you know i'll, I'll use a few players, um, some HH fans can shout their names out. Jalen, mm -hmm. Ashney, and Maya. You know, these are players that um, you'll see us post often, and they just put in the same amount of work. And where they are now from where they started is mind boggling because, wow. you wow. know, despite four lockdowns, they've still found ways to get better. And they're, they're their truest testaments to like what High Impact Hoops is about, right? Because it would have been easier for them to quit, but they rose and they've reached higher levels. and the one thing that's consistent with all three of them, they put it in their own work. Like they, they want it. They never turn down workouts, you know, like, nope. they will not. Mm, that's a big sign, right? If you're not turning down a workout, you know how yeah. valuable it is. So it doesn't you're matter. You're not rolling your eyes. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like they, so want you, it. they want it. Right. So some people say they want it. They get through a first session. They're exhausted as they should be. But then they realize, shoot, I don't want it that bad. You know, like it's, it's yeah. a lot different. You got to go after it. So it doesn't matter so much where they're starting, but it's what they're willing to do, you know? And, um, yeah. Um, our services are just limited by time, right? So if you're not that committed, like it's hard for me to take away time from a player that wants to go two or three times a week, from a player that wants to go once a week, and every week I see them, they ain't getting no better, right? So mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily matter where you start or if you're playing for a team, but just like what your goals are. What your goals and commit to it. Exactly. I like that, yeah. Commit to it. I have to stop saying I like that, but then I do. You're, you're saying I so much great it. Oh man! Honestly, like I have, your honesty, I have some... <laughs> it's Thank awesome. You. It's awesome. I mean, it's you will assume that you know. Sometimes when people see other people post some things on social media, which we talk a little bit earlier on, like oh, they, they might feel intimidating. But honestly, what you post is who you are, and that's that right. authenticity is great, and we need that because I want to be comfortable enough to say, "Hi, my name is so and so," and blah blah blah, and you just feel like you're talking to a family, like you know, not mm. like you know, give me your natural hair color and red eye color and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, I feel nah. like I need to be ripped apart just to get the right answer that I'm looking for. But nah, your you. honesty and openness is really appreciated. I think this is why you're one of the, you know, well-respected trainers here within Toronto, Ontario and the surrounding you, areas, you know, and we wish you guys like all the best to continue growing, get thank more you so facilities, <laughs> you know, like everything. No doubt. Well, thank you <laughs> so much. Because we, we need that. We need those one-on-one -on -one trainers. We need those coaches that can be honest and authentic with not just us as parents, but right. with the athletes too. Right? You know, I'll take this time right now to give you your flowers because I see you shouting all of us out in the community. <laughs> and I just think what you do is like really selfless and it's like, it's dope because I think um, for a lot of times in the basketball community, it's been very like um, territorial, but like, you're just dropping dimes to everybody, you're showing love to everybody, you're encouraging everybody, and you know, we appreciate it. So 
you know, you salute to you. I give people their flowers while they can smell them. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so, we <laughs> thank appreciate you. you. Thank you. I, you know what? I, I try, I think this is the only time I often show my face because I don't ever <laughs> want it to be about me. Um, <laughs> I got you. And I always say my, the reason why I started is because it was hard when my kids were switching from soccer to basketball. It's like, everybody hold on to their info. Nobody wanted to share. I'm like, what? What is this? Yeah, exactly, it make right? no sense. Like, you know, you yeah. don't lose anything just sharing. If it doesn't work out, that's fine. But the info is out now. Exactly. exactly. Plus, with social media, it's hard to know who's behind these fancy accounts. So it's easier to put a face to the person right. and be personable. And let's not lose track of that. So I really, I'm really I appreciate that. Thank you. And hopefully, no you know, it is helping people and it is. Know, continue with your goals and whatever they um, they want to do. Um, but as we're winding down, you did mention that, you know, your little boy is sleeping and I, I'm like, oh, that's so great. Almost three years old. Oh my God, I remember oh those gosh. years. Enjoy that. We're going by too fast. Best. <laughs> it does. Fast. It does. Before you right. know it, you'll be like double digits, and it's like wow. Aye, chill, chill, you know you're going when this. the shoe sizes changes by yeah. the hour. So heads oh, up. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm soaking it all in. I'm enjoying every minute. It's going by so yes. fast, but yes. I love Take it. all those pictures. When Google tells you your picture is full, say I don't care. Yeah, delete yes. them, joints. Back up and keep taking <laughs> pictures of those and videos. Okay. You trust no me, you'll enjoy. Um few last questions to sort of wind down a bit as to your favorite um, book that you read. I'm compiling a list of all the various books that everybody read that sort of helps them out throughout your life. So is there any particular book that you've come across, you read that you like to share? Wow. That's a good one. Um, there's a lot of books that have helped me. The one that stuck with me the most recently has been um, the Mamba mentality that stuck with me. Okay. And um, right now I'm reading a um, biography on Asada Shakur, Tupac Shakur's on um, okay. Seek the Asylum in Cuba. So those are okay. important. Another one I read a long time ago called The Four Agreements. That's more of a spiritual one, but Ashney's asking favorite WNBA yes. player. Yes, good jokes. question. Let's go. Shout out to Ashney. <laughs> Um, Sue Bird, hands down. She's so tough. Hi, Ashley. Sue Bird. <laughs> so who's yeah, your favorite Sue, uh, WNBA? Sue Bird. Sue Bird, hands Sue down. Bird. Sue okay. Bird. Okay. Says, I have it's a bad confession. I got, I got 3% juice on my bad or my phone. Oh, yeah. No problem. No problem. Um, but last word to you, and then we shut down. You know, you already it's mentioned fun. where we can find you and what you're doing, but... Um, Anything that you want to say to, you know, the Bottle Mom community, everybody else that's looking to connect with you. Your, this uh, is your moment. Cool. So, yeah, yeah. High Impact Hoops being hard to find. We post pretty often. High.impact.hoops on Instagram. Um, www.highimpacthoops.com. Uh, you can find us on both those platforms. All our information is there, our contact, you know, whether it's phone or email. And to everybody watching, just keep chasing your dreams. We've never been in a more prosperous and opportunistic time for Canada basketball for male and female, which is amazing because for a long time it was just males, but now the sisters are getting love too, mm -hmm. which I'm all for it. And if you put in the words, there's nothing you can't accomplish. But I tell everybody, you need two hours. And two hours should have nothing to do with your coach, your trainer, or your parents. So if you're not being driven somewhere, are you still practicing? Are you watching game tape? Are you stretching? Are you lifting? Are you ball handling? Are you shooting? Are you outside running? What are you doing? Got to do two hours a day. Minimum. I like that. Well, thank you so much, Bo Troy. Honestly, I always you, learn, but you've been so much fun and uh, great I'm jams. So I'm going to recap it and share it with everybody. <laughs> and if everybody has I'm any done. other questions afterwards, by all means, message and I'll send it to him and uh, you can reconnect with him later on. So I'll let okay. you go for now. Kiss him good night for us I and will, uh, for have sure. a good rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank I you. Appreciate thank you guys. You. Right. Bye, guys. One.